What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn about a Linux tool called Ranger, which is a terminal based file manager, and it can be especially interesting for those of you guys who enjoy using Vim and other terminal tools. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to take a look at Ranger, which is, as I already mentioned, a Linux terminal based file manager. So a file manager that does not work with a graphical user interface, but that works purely in the terminal in the command line. And the great thing about these terminal tools and command line tools is that they oftentimes have a rich set of key binds, which in the beginning is very confusing. But once you get used to it, it can massively speed up your workflow. And the best example for this is, of course, Vim. I have a lot of videos on this channel about Vim, about NeoVim, why you should use it, how it works, and how you should use it, how to configure it, and stuff like this. And Ranger is basically a Vim-like file manager in the command line, you could say. A lot of the key binds are quite similar, and this is what we're going to explore in this video today. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to open up a command line and you want to install it using your package manager. So on Debian-based distributions, this is sudo apt install and then Ranger. In my case, this is already installed, so you're not going to see any changes being made here. Uh, and once you have this installed, what you can do is you can navigate to a directory that you want to explore. In my case, I have prepared here a Ranger tutorial directory so that I don't have to uh, go through my personal files here. So I'm going to go to desktop, I'm going to go to Ranger tutorial, and here I can just run the command Ranger. And what you will see here is that I have this uh, file manager here, and I can go back to the desktop. And what you can see is that you already have um, a structure here, you can go through the directories on the left side, you can see the parent directory on the right side, you can see a preview of what is contained in the directory that you're going to go into. So desktop, for example, and then you can go into desktop, then I have here Ranger tutorial, and then I have directory one, two, three, and then I have some directories in here as well. So I can navigate through this. Now, one very simple way to do that is to just use the arrow keys. Now, this is, of course, not the Vim like way to do it. But you can just use the arrow keys right to go into something left to go back uh, up and down to just, you know, go up and down. Um, but you can also do that with enter, you can use enter to enter a directory. Or this is now the Vim like way is you can use JK, uh, L and H. So L to go into a directory K to go up J to go down, and H to go back, basically. So L H to go parent and subdirectory, and then um, K and J to go up and down. Um, but again, you can also use just the arrow keys if you want to. So basically the same as Vim. So for this video today, I have prepared a couple of key binds that I want to show you guys this list is by no means complete. So I just want to show a couple of interesting key binds that I've prepared here. But of course, the list goes on and there are many more things that you can do with Ranger. Now, one very simple thing is you can use Q to quit. So you can just use Q and then you're out of Ranger and you don't have to uh, use something like uh, in Vim colon Q or something like this. You can just press Q and you're out of Ranger. Um, you can also use R or capital R to reload a directory. So if you want to reload the content manually, you can just use uppercase R and it will reload the content of the directory. Um, now maybe so that we can see we can work with something we're going to go into a directory. And when you're inside of a directory here, what you can do is you can create new files by just using basic commands like touch, or you can use uh, make directory to make a new directory. And you do that by using the colon, which is very similar to Vim. So you just use colon. Uh, and then you type touch, for example, test.txt. And this creates now a new text file. And I can do the same thing with make directory mk dir. Um, my directory here like this. And then I have these new uh, yeah, file and directory created here. And what you can do with a file is you can just press enter to open it in your default editor. In my case, now this is NeoVim, I can write something like Hello World here. Um, and then basically, I have the content here, Hello World, which is also displayed here as a preview. So that is one way to open a file. Now, maybe you don't want to use Vim, you want to use something else. And what you can do in this case is you can use the R key, which is basically an open with. So open with basically meaning open with another uh, editor. So for example, if I press one, I don't know actually what one is. Uh, but but you for PDF files, for example, if you have a PDF file, I can create one even though it's not going to be valid. So test.pdf, for example, I can just 
uh, press enter. In my case, now this is going to, of course, say it's unreadable, but you can see it opens up document viewer. If I go with R, uh, I can choose also different PDF editors that I have. For example, I can use one to open up ocular. Uh, but ocular, of course, is also going to have trouble displaying the content of this file because it's just an empty PDF file. And actually, it seems like it crashes. No, it doesn't crash. Um, yeah, so this is one thing that you can do, you can use the R key to choose which tool you want to use to open a file manually. By default, it's just going to pick the default application. Um, Alright, so other basic commands here that you probably also know from Vim, if you're a Vim user is you can use GG to go to the top of the list. And you can use capital G to go to the bottom of the list. This is the same as in a Vim document. Now, let me maybe zoom in a little bit so you can see better what I'm doing here. So again, GG goes to the top capital G goes to the bottom, same as in Vim. Now, if you don't want to have this uh, preview perspective here, where you have the parent directory on the left, where you have the preview or the subdirectory on the right, what you can do is you can use the tile waves, uh, the, the tile wave uh, key to basically switch the, the view. So this, this key down here in the bottom left. Um, and this basically allows you to to switch the view between the preview view and just whatever is here right now. So this also works. But of course, you can still go back and forth with the arrow keys. I prefer this view more. In my personal opinion, it's better, but you can use whatever you want. Now, some other basic stuff that you can do is you can rename files. How do you do that? You just use CW. So CW renames the file test.txt to other file.txt, for example. And as you can see, it works. By the way, Ranger by default also supports uh, using the mouse. So you can also just uh, use the mouse to go back and forth, as you can see here. Uh, but of course, that goes beyond uh, the, the, the purpose of Ranger, because the purpose of Ranger is to use the terminal and the, the keyboard, essentially. Um, well, so what else we can do is we can cut and paste. So I can say DD to cut, I can go into another directory, and I can say PP to paste. So cut and paste is basically DD, like in Vim, delete, and at the same time, cut and PP to paste in another, um, in another directory, I can also yank a file. So I can say YY, which is the copy line in Vim, I can go back and I can say PP again, and then I have a copy of other file here. And I didn't cut it, I just copied it. So that's simple. Um, also, what I have here is I have uh, a DD command. So D capital D, which is basically deleting it. So D and capital D, you can see here the different options. Once I press D with capital D, I get console delete, it asks me here to execute this command and deleting other file succeeded. Now what's interesting is that when I say file one.txt, and then file two.txt, when I create multiple files, and I want to delete multiple of these files, what I can do is I can select them, I can mark them or mark is actually something else I can select them uh, with space, for example. And then I can say, uh, D, D. And then it asks me to confirm the deletion because now I have multiple files. In this case, I have to say yes, and then it deletes both files. Uh, I think the same is true. If you have a directory, let's see if that's the case touch file.txt when I go back and I try to delete the directory, it will ask me for the deletion, even though it's one directory, the directory contains multiple files. So it asks me for confirmation. Now, an alternative to that is to use D capital T, which basically moves it to the trash. Now, what is important here is that by default, this has its own implementation. So DT um, actually has an implementation in Ranger in and of itself. But in my case, I overwrote that implementation because it caused some problems, which brings us to the next point, you can actually configure Ranger customly. And how you do that is you go to the config directory. So um, user directory, and then dot config, and then uh, Ranger, I think. And here you have to create a file rc.conf. And in my case, I have here uh, a mapping mapping DT to this command here, basically shell move and then whatever the file is to home username, local shared trash file. So basically move it to the to the trash. But in this case, also, I don't get uh, the question uh, of whether I want to to confirm the deletion, it just deletes it, 
which is because I have my own command here. So let's go back to our directory ranger. So that's what you can do. You can delete, you can move to trash. Um, by default, it should have already the, the functionality to move to trash. But in my case, it didn't work for some reason. Um, but yeah, what else we can do is we can mark files in different ways. So I can touch again here file one dot txt and then file two dot txt and then file three dot txt. And instead of just using space to mark individual files or to select individual files, I can also use something like the Vim visual line mode. So I can use shift and V to open up visual mode basically. Um, and then uh, I can also use V to select everything or to toggle the selection of everything. So I can use just V itself to select everything that's not selected and to unselect everything that is selected, which in this case results in this. And yeah, then I can do again uh, some operations. Now, one thing that is interesting is I can do a bulk rename. So basically, if I have file one, file two, file three, uh, txt selected, what I can now do is I can run the command with colon bulk rename, and then percent s. And what this does is it opens up a NeoVim instance in my case, so basically your editor, and um, it gives you the file names here and you can manipulate them. So for example, I can go into visual block mode, I can remove the txt and I can replace it with png. For example, that is um, a, a basic renaming that I can do here. And now I can write this I can write and quit, I can write and quit again, or actually just quit. Uh, and then you can see renamed file one txt to file one png file two txt file two png and so on. And now they have different different file names, which of course, in this case doesn't make sense because they're not images. But this is a feature that you can also use your bulk renaming. Um, Alright, so other basic things that we can do is we can use a basic search using slash the same way we do it in BIM. So just slash and then for example, file. And in this case, it's going to jump to something that contains file, I can use n to go to the next and capital N to go to the previous one. So basically, if I let's maybe create some some other file.txt here again, and maybe also touch test.txt. Now, when I am somewhere here, I can look now for file and then it will allow me to iterate over all the results that contain file, I can also go back with capital N, and then I can maybe go for slash test, and then I will only find the test, uh, the files that contain the string test. So yeah, this is a basic search, and N and capital N are for next and previous. Uh, we also have the ability to go uh, back in history and forward in history with capital H and capital L. Now, this will oftentimes just be the same as using H and L. But if you jump somewhere, uh, this will allow you to go back and forth in history. And how can you jump somewhere? Let's say, for example, I want to, let's create a subdirectory here, sub here. And in that subdirectory, I want to have a file touch, uh, touch my file dot txt. What I can do now is I can set a waypoint here or a mark, I can mark a waypoint. Um, or I can set a mark for this specific location that I'm currently at. And I can do that in the same way I do it in BIM by just saying M a for example, M a marks this particular location as the the mark a so I can go now somewhere else here, for example. Uh, and now I can jump back to the mark a by using a single quotation mark. So just a single quotation. Um, and then a like this. And I can use the single quotation twice to go back to the last point before the jump. And the good thing is that I can actually, uh, you can see here when I press just the single quotation mark, it shows me what kind of waypoints or what kind of marks I already have, you can see I have a and I have T for trash. And now I can go back here and create maybe another mark here, let's call it G. And now when I use single quotation, you can see I have a mark G, which I can jump to I can jump to a I can jump to G, a G and so on. Uh, and of course, I can also remove a mark. So I can say, um, what was it, I think it was U M. And then I can I can remove the mark uh, G, for example, and then when I try to use single quotation G is no longer there. So that's also quite useful. 
Um, also, what I can do is I can sort so I can uh, sort the files that I have here based on a certain pattern. I do this with a key O. And you can see I have different uh, ways to sort this. So one thing is I can use the base name B, which is the default here sorted by name, basically, but I can also sort by uh, creation time. So a and this basically sorts it by the time uh, or access time. I'm not sure. Let's see, what does it say? A time, I think it's access time and C time is creation time. In this case, it should be the same. Um, but yeah, I can see here, I can sort by different things. Size is also a thing and type is a thing. So maybe if I actually it's already sorted by type, but yeah, alphabetically, as you can see here. Uh, so that is something that we can do, we can also do something simple like change mode, I can use just minus or dash or also plus to change the mode of this particular file. Um, yeah, that's that's also a thing that I can do. And maybe last but not least, what we can do is we can see the disk usage. So I can say du, and it basically shows me the disk usage of uh, this directory, I can go back here. And I can say du, and you can see, or maybe I should uh, go within du, it shows me how much space the individual directories in the current directory take up. Um, so yeah, there's much more to do here, much more to learn here. But that's just a very nice file manager for the terminal, because oftentimes you don't want to use a graphical user interface, you don't want to use your mouse. And once you get comfortable using these key binds, once you integrate them into your workflow, the same way that at least I've done it with Vim, Vim is something that comes very naturally to me already, Ranger is not yet. Uh, but once you have this in your workflow, this is massively going to speed up your productivity, because you can easily just use some key binds that are already automatic in your brain, and you can get things done very quickly. Now, one thing that I forgot to show you is you can also enable, um, you can also show hidden files, hidden directories. So maybe we can create one touch test dot test. And this is now a hidden file, I, I'm not sure if it was created or not, but you can display hidden files by uh, using the key bind ZH, ZH shows now all the hidden files, I can create some more touch test two or something, then I can also touch just test. Uh, and when I now say ZH again, it will hide the hidden files, as you can see. Uh, all right, so that is Ranger. And I think it's a very nice tool, you might want to take a look at it. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.